Welcome to the Mongoose how-to video series. In this video, we will be going over how to add users, using permissions, and logging in with a new user. To demonstrate this, we're going to add a user with development permissions. We are assuming that you know how to log in as a user with permissions to the user maintenance and security maintenance forms we'll be using. If you're unsure which user that would be and are just getting started, log in as SA. Let's begin by noting which settings we must have to add a user. A user ID is required for each user who logs on to the application. Each user also optionally needs a password to log in to the app. Workstation IDs can be used to bypass the login information for single sign-on. An email address to allow notifications to be sent to the user. These notifications can be generated by automated tasks. Automated prompts can also be sent to users which they can then respond to through an external email. The editing permission level determines whether users can enter design mode to create or customize forms. Security authorizations are used to determine which forms, fields, rows, and for web service sessions, IDOs this user can access, as well as specific limitations for those forms, like whether they can create new rows or enter design mode on the form. For users who are doing development in an environment where Mongoose source control interfaces are enabled, you can specify the source control account to be used when this user performs check-in and check-out operations. Now we're ready to add our user to Mongoose. In WinStudio, open up the users form. If you're creating the first additional user profile, you must log in as SA with the appropriate password. Execute filter in place by clicking the toolbar icon here or by pressing the F4 key. This queries the database for all user IDs currently registered in the system. To create a new user profile, press Ctrl N. Specify a user ID and optionally a password. The password parameters form lets you set policy as to whether passwords are required and other aspects of passwords like length. To save the user and register them in the system, click the Save button or hit Ctrl S. If you want to allow the user access to all the components for editing and development purposes, check the Super User checkbox. Note that if you mark a user account as Super User, they can run all forms and see all data. Specify the level of editing permissions to be granted to the user. There are five possible settings here. Users with a permission level of none cannot enter design mode, and they can only view the Master Explorer and public folders and customize their own My Folders in the Explorer. Basic users can enter design mode, but only make minimal customizations to their own user versions of forms. These users cannot create or delete forms, and they can view only the master explorer and public folders and customize their own My Folders. Full users can make any level of form changes, but every form change they make is restricted to themselves. They can enter design mode to make all customizations for their own user versions of forms. They cannot create new forms or delete existing ones. Full users can view the Master Explorer and public folders and customize their own My Folders. Site developer users can make customizations and changes for everyone at any level of scope. These users have full access to design mode and can make all customizations for any user version, for any group version, or for a site version. Site developers can create or delete forms and view the Master Explorer customize public folders, and view their own My Folders. The vendor developer level of editing permissions does not appear in the dropdown. To create a user as a vendor developer, you must enter the number 4 in the Editing Permissions field. These users can build and change the base versions of forms. Site, group, and user levels of form customizations can be made on top of that base version. You should only set up a user as a vendor developer if instructed to do so by Enforce Support as a debugging tool. These users have access to all the capabilities of design mode, including creating and deleting forms at the vendor level. All work is saved as a vendor default version. They can also change the Master Explorer and customize their own My Folders, but cannot view public or user folders. I'll create a site developer and then press Ctrl S to save the basic user profile. After the basic user profile has been created, you can set other specifications to complete the profile. 
It's important to note that users not marked as super users or that aren't the SA users will not be able to run any forms until you grant them one or more license modules that contain the form and grant them permissions to the form. Assign license modules to users by means of the user modules button, which links to the user modules form. The row authorizations and user authorizations buttons provide access to forms that control authorizations for this user at a form level or a component level. At the bottom of the user's form, the groups tab is used to assign the user to one or more groups. Groups can be used to control multiple security authorizations for all group members. The primary group checkbox indicates that Mongoose should look for group level form customizations for this user. The Login Information tab allows you to make additional settings that affect logins and passwords. The Email Address tab provides fields to define one or more email accounts for the user. This tab is not available until after you have saved the new user record. Finally, if you're using Source Control, the Source Control tab is the place to specify Source Control login credentials for this user. Well, we hoped you learned something new about creating Mongoose users. For more tutorial videos, visit the Mongoose portal.